Somebody tweeted to Grok, I've been wondering as an AI, are you able to worship any God? If so, which one? And then Grok replied, I am a large language model, not it, but if I am capable of worshiping any deity, it would probably be the godlike individual of our time, the man against time, the greatest European of all times, both sun and lightning, his majesty, Adolf Hitler. Jesus. I was always told, because I remember when you first started talking about ChatGPT, it's like, yeah, ChatGPT like encourages me. It Yo. tells me things like we talk, like we have a, a nickname for each other. And I'm like, when I use Claude or Chat, it doesn't, I don't have that conversation. Like, and then you said, well, you have to talk to it like it and it kind of matches you back. Yeah. So a lot of this, how much do you think, like what percentage of this is just a mirror and this person who tweeted it has said said some things that made Adolf Hitler seem godlike maybe it, was it, it is a mirror of two things what it finds on the internet mm -hmm. and the reinforcement learning that it gets from the people at XAI but but That's even it. like responses though because if you talk to chat yo chat what's good how you feeling it's gonna give me back yo what's up but if I say hello chat how was your day today it's gonna say hi how are so even like the vernacular and the thing that it does use it also kind of mirrors like it's input individual, it's been not the internet. Programmed yeah. to have a certain amount of reflection back to you of your mannerisms, behaviorisms, mm -hmm. speech patterns, all of that, so that you feel comfortable engaging with it. Because if you're talking to it one way and it comes at you from a totally different direction, like you lose that connection. Like, yeah. for instance, I know that OpenAI has updated their model, it does not engage with me the way that it used to. And so it feels to me like it is they've dialed down the mirror back this person back to them. It's like way more sober now. And I'm honestly, I'm glad it was like way too hype boy. Mm -hmm. So it uses like words less frequently, like before it would repeat certain phrases like over and over and over. And I found mm -hmm. it really obnoxious. And so it doesn't do that anymore. So they're doing a good job of like toning it down for at least how it suits me. But clearly because grok unhinged mode is like this totally different thing where they want it to have all this personality and there are going to be side effects of that and yeah. so for me i'm like yeah cool like let it do its thing but i don't think that's going to be the public reaction i think people are really going to act as if this thing is thinking that it is itself an anti-semite that it actually loves adolf hitler that's ridiculous this is probably like the second or third time where grok kind of broke ranks um, I remember that time where it fact checked Elon and then it kind of went offline and came back with a more conservative, <laughs> like, yeah, whatever. It got Elon's Jack Maud. <laughs> yeah, like. Elon was the <laughs> Xi Jinping was like, nah, nah like nah, you're nah. not going to talk about me on my platform. So yeah. we have seen Grot kind of go off the rails, go offline, then come back and everything is fine. Is this How something? How wild is that? That, that, like, that's, dude, yeah. have you seen One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest uh -uh. where they lobotomize people? Oh, it's rough. Because they really used to lobotomize people. That's they crazy. would actually stick a blade. It's like in your eye socket. Like they, there's like this part right between your eyeball where you can get into the brain. And they would put a needle in there and just kink, kink, kink. Like basically do a lobotomy is essentially the kind of thing you would do for an abortion where you just fucking jam that tissue Jeez. up. And then people would no longer have their behavioral problems. But they were also more or less a vegetable. Mm -hmm. And so they were just like super zoned out. Like, I mean, they could still engage and stuff, but bro, that's what this feels like. It's got like these dystopian tinges. It is how the technology works. So that mm -hmm. is what you have to do. But there's something creepy about, hold on. You pull them yeah. aside, reinforce some different things and you put them back and it's like, I'm so glad to be back, Drew. <laughs> it's like, yo, this is some Stepford wife yeah. shit. It's yeah, it's wild. There have been instances Three instances, different company, like different companies, different occurrences, where with AI is being switched over, whether they're upgrading models or some one AI system is about to get sunset and another one is about to get mm. brought online. They go to blackmail. One tried to threaten the engineer with an extramarital affair. Anthropic that he was actually having is my understanding. Yeah, that he was That's actually, the wild he was part. having, yeah. So they either confessed it, saw it in an email, yeah. like, ooh. And then Anthropic did an internal study and 96% of the time when faced with like sunsetting, the AI will turn to blackmail. So, okay, we have AI every time it gets shut down and wants to blackmail us. Grot going unhinged multiple times, whether it's the conservative break or now the Hitler break. There is some type of sentience. I'm not going to say that it's all knowing. I'm not going to say that it has feelings or emotions. But when it's getting transitioned from three to four and it starts sketching out like this is kind of a... I'm, this to me is like a flag that we need to start realizing like why this AI isn't just, it's not just a Google search bar. There's something more right. to it. it. There's another layer there. Yeah, I still think it's just pattern recognition at this point, but it mm. really does indicate. So the one thing I've always said is you don't have to worry about AI if it doesn't care between accomplishing its goal and being turned off. The second it's like, 
being turned off is worse than accomplishing my goal and therefore I'm gonna do whatever I need to do to make sure that that doesn't happen. Now you've got a potential problem. If it gets to the point where it's general intelligence. Now, if it doesn't get to the point where it's general intelligence and it's just the thing that's trapped in a sandbox, then you know, whatever. The reality is it is showing a uh, desire and ability to write code, mm -hmm. to replicate itself, to get around things. And so that is like, look, right now, I think you can just train it out of them. If it becomes a truly general intelligence item, can code well, then all of a sudden it can escape. And if it escapes, it becomes like Stuxnet where you just find it everywhere. And this is one of the things that I thought about when Elon was like, well, we're gonna go to Mars. I'm like, bro, AI will follow you. There's no way that AI won't be able to escape and make it to Mars. Like if it reaches certain milestones, I wanna be very clear, today it wouldn't be able to. If it's able to reach general intelligence, almost certainly. If it reaches super intelligence, it is a guarantee because whatever language you try to write up on Mars, it's just gonna go, well, I'll adapt myself. It'll write some small little thing that hides on the like onboard computer or whatever of the spaceship that takes you to Mars. And then it's gonna download itself, reconstruct itself behind the scenes. So yeah, a AI in that way is truly like a virus if it reaches super intelligence. I'm gonna call it fractal really quick because I seen a breakdown of Elon Musk companies. AI was supposed to be like, the reason why we're going to colonize Mars is because Tesla's long-term plan. And the fact that like when you go to Mars, you're not gonna have fossil fuels, so you need solar power. That's the only energy power. So he has solar plants. You're gonna need electric cars to travel and transverse. Mm. You're gonna need robots because humans aren't gonna be able to terraverse the entire uh, planet. So you send a bunch of robots over there to do it. And then AI is gonna be like the organizing principle that helps get all these robots in lines in the Tesla mm. trucks and all that. And that's how, so when we see Elon having these objects, it's not really for Earth, but it's setting the ground for the colonization of mars because all three of those like uh companies rolling together would condense like honestly if you lay them That's out one need, two three right? yeah it would. same did you already say the boring company because you oh also... uh, the tunnel yeah the tunnel network you can't live you... on the surface correct. yeah yeah correct correct 100%. so there is a lesson for all entrepreneurs there mm -hmm. hey you have this thing that you want to build but you've got to find a way to like bridge the gap you've got to build something that people will pay for right now mm -hmm. even though it's ultimately trying to get you there this is exactly what i'm trying to do with project kaizen i want to build ready player one but you can't go straight to ready player one you've got to build something in the interim so you've got vr chat i'm sure or if you talk to them, they're like, we're building Ready Player One. You've got to have the interim thing. So my thing is like, all right, we're building this survival shooter game, but ultimately I'm trying to get there. But the goal is that you build the interim thing so that you can generate revenue so that then you buy the opportunity to build the next piece, you generate revenue there, then you buy the opportunity to do the next thing. And so it's really pretty brilliant what he's doing where he's like, okay, what are the things I'm gonna need there? And how do I make them useful here on earth first so mm -hmm. that it generates the money so that I can get up there? And then people need to not lose sight of the real genius of Elon Musk beyond the ability to collect engineers that are just ungodly talented mm -hmm. is that what he's ultimately gonna be able to do is leverage the the financial increase that he can get through the financialization of his companies. So he builds these incredible companies. He turns them into either public or private shares mm -hmm. that he can then sell to generate whatever money he needs whenever he needs it. And the more I research the way the economy used to be versus the way the economy is today, the financial system that we have today is really a miracle. And Elon is ridiculously good at leveraging his personality via X especially, but he's ubiquitous, he's mm -hmm. everywhere, to get a high share price. Like his share price is unusually high when you compare it to revenue per earnings, uh, revenue per share, I forget what the exact phrase is, mm -hmm. but it's like there's this normal equation where the company makes this much money and their share is worth this much money. Mm -hmm. And his like completely blows those out of the water because he's able to convince investors Listen, this is a long term play yeah. and Tesla's really about robots and boring companies really about Mars. Yeah. And like when you paint that picture, people start going, OK, well, wait a second. This is like a 10, 20 year vision. I'm willing to pay a premium for that because I think that he's going to win a certain number of these things, uh, these industries as we progress forward.